What's going on everybody? It's me, it's the Original Gamer Stevie Stro, and we are back for yet another exciting video on programming in BASIC with the Tandy Color Computer. <laughs> Now, I'm going to show you a clip of what happened in my last video, but um, I did a spaceship demo. And you're going to see here from this preview that the spaceship demo had some very cool things about it. But what wasn't cool about the spaceship demo was that it was a little slow and choppy. Not only is it slow and choppy, but it is also um, just kind of a big and bulky spaceship. So I wanted to, number one, make the spaceship look better. But number two, I wanted to optimize the entire um, uh, program where it will actually move faster on the screen. So this is going to now show you what the optimized version looks like, where not only does the spaceship look better, but he moves a lot faster. And we're going to get into the nuts and bolts of what we did to optimize it. So let's get started. The first thing I do in the lower left hand corner of the screen here is I actually draw a new spaceship. And I've moved him over here to the far corner. I'll explain why in a minute, but right now the spaceship doesn't look that impressive, so then I went ahead and I painted him in. Now the spaceship is solid. Now he looks a little bit more like a spaceship, but much like my other spaceship, it just kept reminding me of a house, so I wanted to do something different. This is supposed to be like the, 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 the pod you sit in and like some rocket thrusters in the back, but it just wasn't looking cool enough, so I just drew a line across here. I said, okay, let me just separate this. Let me create some illusion of something. I don't know. And I'm like, well, that looks kind of cool. I got a line. I got some separation. Why don't I turn that bottom line down there into colors so it will actually look like a thruster? Okay, and then I just drew um, odd pixels in between the white pixels. And when you alternate black and white pixels on a P-Mode 4 screen, you get artifacts. So I just went across like this, and I turned that white stripe into a red stripe. So this is now in, like engine glow. All right, so now the spaceship looks a little bit cooler. All right, now I went ahead and drew in my windshield. This is where the pilot would sit in my spaceship. And now it looks, well, actually it kind of looks like the letter A with thunder thighs, but whatever, it's a spaceship, right? So here's my spaceship. It looks better than the other spaceship. Let's just leave it at that. It's looking better. Using the draw command, I would have to spend a lot of time figuring out how to get fancy. This is as good as I could get without trying to get super fancy or doing an actual now bitmap and graph paper and a bunch of crap like that, right? So not bad for the draw command, right? So this is my spaceship. Now I need to start to create my reverse mask. So this is me getting the spaceship into the variable of SP for spaceship. This is me now putting the spaceship um, with a preset option that reverses all the pixels. This is my reverse mask. But since I've made my spaceship solid now and it's solid white, and if I put white on top of white, it's going to get lost again. So what I did now is I did another draw command and I drew around the outside of the spaceship in black, making it one pixel bigger in all directions. And so now this is an outline. So I now have a reverse mask that is not only a cutout of the spaceship, but it actually has one extra pixel outline around it. So my spaceship will now be outlined. And then this is gotten into the variable RM for my reverse mask. So a few more steps in um, designing the spaceship and doing a couple of cool little tricks to give the spaceship an outline effect, which is the same effect that you'll notice if you've ever played Sailor Man. All of those sprites are outlined too by one pixel and it just kind of looks cool, right? So here's my new spaceship. What else did I do? I improved the way the planets are generated. And so I took a minute here to actually erase out the planets to fix a couple of problems that happen. Sometimes when planets overlap, and by the way, look how much faster and smoother this is now. Sometimes when planets overlap, um, they don't paint themselves in or they don't get painted if they're off in the corner or on the side or sometimes they get lost when a planet's in front of a planet. So instead of me just drawing the circle and painting the circle, I added another routine here that you can see that, that expands these black circles to try to like erase the area behind it. And I created this expanse of black circles to actually be just slightly bigger than the original circle was too. So you end up with this outline effect too. So I'm kind of clearing the space of the planet. I then draw and paint the planet, but I've actually cleared a space that's a little bit bigger than the planet. So there's an, a built-in outlining effect. So whatever planet is drawn last um, will override and um, be on top of the other planet, but you kind of see this little line here that um, kind of traces the shape of the planet. It's just kind of a cool effect, kind of like a comic book look, cartoon look, right? Um, you'll notice the spaceship's very fast, very smooth. 
and he goes in front of all objects including white objects and you'll see when he goes in front of the white object now you can see that one pixel outline behind the ship. So I've tweaked the logic on the planets as far as the number of planets, as far as the size of the planets, as far as um, uh, the location of the planets because sometimes when a planet was drawn in a corner and it tried to paint the center pixel there was nothing to paint and it just didn't get done so I've just tried to make the planets less likely to glitch um, and it just kinda looks kinda cool and the main thing here is, is not only does a spaceship look better but it's going what feels like twice as fast as the original thing here is the magic of drawing the ship. So this is the draw command here where I'm drawing the ship. Now I'm actually starting down here on pixel 2 line 190. So I'm actually starting to draw the ship down here. Why am I drawing the ship down here on this part of the screen? Because in order for this high speed get and put thing to work, what I get has to fit into byte boundaries. A byte on a black and white screen there are eight pixels, um, which are the same thing as eight bits of ons and offs, zeros and ones. And those eight pixels or those eight bits equal one byte of memory in the computer. And if I can take a black and white image that's one byte long or eight pixels long, and I can get that as a, as a byte, and if I can put it on byte boundaries too, where I put it on once of every eight pixels, I can put it faster. When you get things with the comma G, it has to account for and capture every bit. And when you move it at odd pixels and you move it at different random pixel positions, the computer has to shift bits around in memory and it takes the computer longer to do the binary math and do the binary shuffle of moving bits around through memory. So if we make the computer not have to think about where a bit is and we say we're going to paste things as an entire byte, the computer can just do its job and not have to worry about thinking about it and it literally allows it to go faster. So for this to work my object has to be um, as wide um, as 8 pixel increments. So it has to be either 8 pixels wide or 16 pixels wide or 24 pixels wide. So I have to get a perfect um, uh, block of 8, eight pixels um, an increment of eight pixels or more. So like for example if, if, my, if my picture, if my spaceship was ten pixels wide I couldn't get it with just the 8 and I couldn't get it with 10 I'd still have to get it with 16 I have to I have to grab my rectangle and the width of my rectangle has to be a, a, a division of 8 and has to factor into the number 8 perfectly on how I'm getting it I also have to put it on a on an x coordinate that is also a perfect m multiple or factor of 8 so when I draw my ship here these go sub 500s are all the pauses. So this is me drawing the ship. This is me painting in the ship and pausing. This is me drawing the one line in the bottom that separates it. This is me doing a, um, uh, a step two of drawing black um, lines in between the white lines to turn it red. And then I go sub this. This is me drawing now the cockpit on the spaceship. And then this is me getting the spaceship. And the thing that's improved here is that the spaceship was originally 40 by 40. Now technically with 40 by 40 I could have done the same block increments um, and just done the right position but I, I also wanted to take time to improve the look of the ship. So the ship is now 16 pixels wide instead of 40 and with 16 pixels wide is the perfect multiple of 8 right so that's 2 bytes wide. Um, the actual spaceship itself is is 12 pixels wide and then I've got a 2 pixel border on each side of that so that gives me my 16 pixels. So I've got 16 pixels for the width and 20 pixels for the height so I've kind of tightened down the spaceship to make it smaller and a smaller object will also pace faster too because there's less bytes to paste right so it's 2 bytes wide by a, tw by a 20 bytes tall. I've got 40 bytes of information. The less bytes the computer has to paste, the faster it can do its job. The main thing here that's different is that when I get these coordinates, I am not using the comma G option. And by not using the comma G option, I'm getting the information very fast and loose. I'm just getting it and we're trusting that it's going to be right and we're going to paste it. And if we paste it in the right position on the screen, it will look perfectly. I then paste it and then I put it with the preset to start my reverse mask. This is me then drawing the um, the one pixel outline around it and then this is me getting my final reverse mask. 
what did I do to, in, to improve the planet logic? Okay, so the planet starts on line 40. Um, we, we set the P mode to P mode 4. Um, we clear the screen, then we switch to P mode 3, which is how we hack our colors. This is where we draw our stars. Here's the first thing I tweaked in the number of planets. I'm going to say it's um, random 7 plus 2. So by adding plus 2, I'm going to guarantee I'm going to have a minimum of 3 planets, but no more than 9 planets, because I found that the number of planets would sometimes get too busy. I changed the positioning of the planets where I'm not, my x coordinates never going to be greater than um, 200, so it won't go um, all the way to the side of the screen. I've also added 10 to this, so it'll be at least 10 pixels in from the left of the screen, so it's less likely to be drawn in a spot that can't be painted in. So I've just kind of better controlled the location of where the circle is going to start. Um, I've also changed the radius. I found some of the planets were getting too big. I think the original radius was a random number between 1 and 50. And so now I've made it basically a random number between 8 and 40. So I've said generate random 33 and add 7. So if it generates 1, it'll add 7. It'll be 8. The smallest planet will be eight, a radius of 8. If it picks 33, it'll add 7. The biggest planet will be a radius of 40. But that was still a little bit smaller, a little bit better than um, what I had before. And then this is the magic here. This is a new line here that this is how I blank out or black out the circle or the planet before I actually draw the planet and paint the planet. So I, so I figure out what, what is my radius. So whatever my radius here is, I'm going to start at zero. I'm going to go from zero to my radius plus two. And I'm going to basically draw a black circle at that radius point. So I'll draw a circle zero, a circle one, a circle two, a circle three, a circle four. I'll keep expanding my black circles until I've drawn a circle that's actually a little bit bigger than the final one that I'm going to do on a screen. So I'm kind of hollowing out and blacking out the area behind where the circle will be generated. Now, the way the circle command works, though, when you do this, it doesn't completely solidly fill it in. There's like little gaps that get left behind and those gaps sometimes create a cool effect on what the planet looks like when it gets painted in because if when you go to paint the planet if it can't paint in where all those gaps were you see little textures on the surface and so it's kind of a cool fringe benefit kind of a little bonus feature to make your planet look a little bit more rocky or textury right so this line 56 here is the new line that hollows out the planet and automatically creates the outline around it too because the last the last black circle that's drawn is is too larger than what the actual planet will be drawn and painted in the middle of that so it's drawing a smaller planet slightly smaller slit planet in the middle of a bigger black planet so I automatically get that bonus outline and this is when then I draw the circle this is where I paint the circle and this is where I start my main loop where I now I'm gonna get ready to p copy my page and start the animation loop the animation loop starts on roughly 90 I believe and then here's the main animation loop and this is only changed ever so slightly so what has changed about this here the main thing here that has changed is how I generate the random X coordinate for where I'm gonna put the ship on the screen I originally said X will be a random number between 1 and 200 and whatever and it can go anywhere and that works fine when you use the comma G option but that also causes the computer to paste things and put things slower because it has to figure out where these bits have been shifted in memory so rather than doing that I generate a number between 0 and 29 and then I multiply that number by 8 and so I get even positions and so the perfect example right here is our actual text screen our text screen is 32 columns or 32 characters wide each of these characters is one byte of information on a graphic screen one byte would be one character wide and one um, one line of that character so like the top of the number 9 here just that top line that would be one byte but it took all 8 bits of information to to do this and then I have to move over 8 bits each time so I only have 32 positions on my graphic screen when I'm moving left and right and I have to make sure I'm putting things on an exact um, slot on the screen that fits into one of these even byte locations so it's going to be 0, 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48 and so on those are the positions and so I'm actually putting my graphics um, on the same, basically the same horizontal locations as where text would go, right? So I've got 32 um, um, basically X slots or positions to put things on. So I pick that number, I multiply that number by 8, so I'm guaranteeing I'm going to be placing things on a, on a perfect 8, um, eight pixel or 1 byte boundary. When I start 
putting my spaceship on the screen now, I'm actually also starting to put it down at line 171 because the height of the spaceship is now only 20 pixels. So I can start lower and move them up. Before the ship was taller, so I had to start at like 151 because I had 40 pixels, so I had a bigger spaceship to move. So I can start lower on the screen. The other thing I've changed here is that when I get the background, I also don't use comma G in the background getting because again, we are always going to be in a perfect bite spot. We're always going to be in a perfect um, even bite location wherever I get or put anything. So when I'm getting the background, I can get the background without the comma G. That also speeds up the restoring of the background. And once I got the background, I paste the reverse mask and then I paste the spaceship with the or option which makes it transparent. Then I do my P copy, I copy everything back and then we're done. So that is the loop. And er everything that I've done with this now leaves me with a much more smoother, faster, prettier spaceship. So right now we're generating our planets and you're going to see some of these things blacking themselves out. Boom, boom, boom. Generate my planets. This does slow it down just a little bit because we have to wait. But here we go. Here's the payoff. That same spaceship now is scrolling so much faster on the screen because of the fact that I am able to put things and not force my computer to have to figure out where the bits are and do all these bit shiftings and memory scrollings through bits and zeros and ones. The computer doesn't have to think about individual bits. The computer only has to think about a whole full byte. And that's just an easier pill for it to swallow because it just says, okay, byte, 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 not bit shift bit shift bit shift it's bite 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 and we can do things on a bite basis much faster than we can do them on a bit by bit basis so and this is it this is the optimized spaceship routine there is one more thing I could do here to further optimize it but it's probably not worth the time to do it um, but right now what I'm doing for my P copying is I'm actually P copying all four sections of this screen um, so I am copying the entire screen every cycle as I'm scrolling. If I wanted to further optimize this demo, I could do some calculations to see where my spaceship is on the vertical axis and copy just the page or two pages that it's on and that would also increase the frame rates because if I'm not having to copy four pages every time I've got less things to do each cycle it will cycle faster so to optimize this demo I could put in a few more pieces of logic and do some kind of dynamic page copying depending on where I am but I'm not sure that the time that it would take and the amount of code I would have to write and then the additional calculations within that process, I'm not sure if those would be noticeably better or not. It would be an interesting experiment, but it's an experiment I'm really not um, concerned with doing right now because I'm not going to lose any sleep over that. I was losing sleep over what the spaceship looked like. I was losing sleep over how slow the spaceship was. Right now, I'm kind of okay with this. It still looks, you know, it doesn't look like an awesome spaceship, but it looks like a slightly better spaceship than it did. So this is now an exercise in optimizing uh, a program to make it run a little faster. And that's something we got to do, especially in games. Once you start to work on your game and your game logic and your game mechanics and your kind of game cycles and all the things that are happening to make everything move and do its job, you're eventually going to say, well, all right, what can I do to make this faster? Because I've only got this one computer, I've only got this one processor, and it only runs at this one speed. I need more cowbell. And the, you can't make the computer faster, but you can try to find ways to make your program faster by just finding different efficiencies and economies in how you write it and how you make it do things and how we can make the processor's job a little bit easier whenever possible. So this is optimizing get and put in basic and I think it's pretty cool. I hope you've enjoyed it. Our next video will be another chapter in the book now. I think I'm ready to move on to another chapter. Um, I'm, I'm happy that I did this. I think the results were worth it. I think it looks kind of cool and it's interesting, right? So um, that's it guys. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy this video, give it a like. If you got something you want to say, throw out a comment. If you know any Anybody who might find this interesting, share this video with them and with your friends. And maybe check out my website down here, ogstevistro.com, for cool merchandise like this. You can get t-shirts, coffee mugs, DVDs, all kinds of cool stuff like that. We'll see you on the next video, everybody. Coco forever. Gameplay goodness. Take care.